In this episode, the Spa 24, NASCAR at Chicago, Formula One in Austria, and Indy at Mid-Ohio. Welcome to episode 237 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell, this past weekend was packed with racing. Oh, and most all of it was amazing. Most of it, yes. Shall we start off with uh, the longest one? Yeah, let's go. Let's start with the longest one, okay. which would have been the Crowd Strike Spa 24 Hours. A GT3 race put on by the SRO, yes. uh, which is a global series that runs a lot of races. Uh, and this is a neat race. I think there's five or six classes. I don't know. It's like bronze, silver, and then a bunch of other mm-hmm. uh, classes, depending on whatever your there's license level is. Bronze, silver, pro cup, yeah, uh, gold, pro-am. There's a lot. Regardless, I got to see the beginning of this race. Um, but before we talk about this race a lot, there was a race prior to this race, uh, which had an unfortunate accident happen at Spa. Yeah. Um, there was, it was a Formula Regional European Championship race. Uh, and I don't, how do you pronounce the driver's name? Uh, I believe it's, uh, I may not do this properly, but Delano Ventoff, I believe. I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, they, they started this race in the rain and he got involved in an incident coming through a Rouge and Radion where he got T-boned and unfortunately passed away. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, it was really, really not good. No. Really, really, really bad. We're Uh, not going to show the crash on here. It was nasty. Um, Yeah. Condolences to their family. Right. So that was prior to this GT3 race. Obviously, they Mm -hmm. started with a moment of silence for this race, and it was kind of a somber feeling to the start of this. Yeah. Which it always is in these situations. Mm-hmm. Racing is still dangerous. I think we do take it somewhat for granted with how well engineered the cars are and how safe they've become. I agree. Um, but yeah, once in a while, a reminder does happen. And that would be a big one. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, It was not good. No, I did see some talk online that uh, it does lend some credence. Do you remember a co- two years ago? Yeah. F1 basically canceled their entire Grand Prix. Yeah. Because it was raining at Spa. They didn't refund any tickets to anyone or anything like that. They kind of did the fans dirty for two caution laps. But no drivers died. So, I don't know. Yeah. Should they have just thrown a red and put the kibosh on this one? A fine line to walk. Entertainment sport, but it's a dangerous entertainment sport. So, yeah. fine line to walk. Agree. Uh, this race, though, was Fairly entertaining. I think that there was 60 starters. If yeah, I Spa 24 had, I believe it was 60 starters. Yep. That is a lot of race cars. That is a ton of race cars, man. Yes. Oh, my God. And this race started in the wet that was also related to that whole incident that we just talked about. Yep. Um, but it was not raining anymore. It was a drying circuit, but it was a little chilly. Uh, and wet and chilly mean no grip. And Correct. There was... Two or three cars that spun it uh, on the first two caution laps, one of which was a Porsche that actually put it in the wall and retired the car before they even went green. And that one really hurts for me because do you know who was in that car? No. So do you remember a driver by the name of Patrick Long? Yes. He wasn't driving it at that time, but this is Patrick Long's or was his first race back from being from retirement. Oh. So this was his first time really competing in a race again, and his teammate stuffs it under safety car. Yeah, that's a bad look. That's a really bad look. Plus, that's a bad look. that was a, like, American-flagged kind of livery Porsche. Was it? It looked so good. It was so cool. I only saw it in bits and pieces. But it, <laughs> it, 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 it it's dead. Yes, that was very unfortunate. Uh, like I said, though, he was not the only one that spun. I think that there was three cars in total that spun prior to them going green so it was a, a rough starting situation but you can't it was a professional racing driver you can't put it in the wall you can't do that flag. you can't do that um when this race got going man gt cars this gt3 spec car that we have right now makes for some really good racing it's arguably the best racing we can find yeah it's amazing it's so close it's so fierce it's just fantastic racing to watch even though this is in quotes multi class, mm-hmm. but it's only multi class because the the licensing is mm-hmm. going on like the way it is. Uh, it's not actually BOP to be multi class, so in theory, all the cars are exactly the same performance. Yeah, um, there's still a, a good amount of passing and a good amount of jockeying. 
compared to the pro drivers to a, like an AM driver. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of almost felt multi-class, which made for some super entertaining moments. So entertaining. Yeah. I mean, you had Porsches using an Audi as a pick. You had Audis using a BMW as a pick. You mm-hmm. had Mercedes using a BMW. It was just chaos. It was amazing. And look at how packed that stand is in, yeah. oh, in, in Eau Rouge there. Yep. That's cool. amazing. Yeah, this race in general did deliver pretty darn good. Uh, go watch the highlights because there are a bunch of specific moments. I remember them panning the camera over to see just like three wide moments through parts of the track that you should never go three wide. Yeah. With like six or seven cars in a pack. And it's just it was fun to watch. Wild. Yeah, super fun to watch. Uh, in the beginning, I did see Ferrari struggling, which was interesting. I yeah. think that the manufacturer team really had problems early. I don't even remember if they actually finished. Mm -hmm. Um, but who took down the win in this race? So the win went to a BMW. It was the Rover racing BMW, the number 98 that had Philip Eng and Marco Wittmann in it. Uh, and they drove the balls off that car. Yes, they did. I mean, they drove just outstandingly. And I, I do remember watching a bit of the end when I got home again, I was watching on and off throughout the race and I was able to catch the last 30 minutes, an hour or so as well. And, I got to hand it to the number 92, my favorite Porsche, the Grello Porsche, right? The Manti Racing Porsche. That had Julian Anlauer, Lawrence Von Tour, and Kevin Estra. And they had no rear diffuser. They had damage. They had no rear diffuser. But they were making a charge for P3 at the end. Yeah. You, no. you know what? They still haven't figured out. No team has really figured out the new 992 GT3R yet. But I think they're starting to hopefully get some grips here. Yeah, uh, at some point they will. There's yeah. no way they don't. Um, but who? Uh, I think that there was four teams in the top four, all with different manufacturers. Yeah, so top four. BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Porsche. That's cool. That's really cool. And I know that there was Lamborghini, McLaren. Uh, was there an Aston in this Ferrari, race? Ferrari, there was like one Aston in the race. Yeah, so there's uh, at least eight different manufacturers yeah. that participated in this race. It was awesome. Yep. It was awesome. Uh, I'd love this race so much. Another quick note. Oh, to, McLaren was there too. Sorry. Yes. Uh, to my understanding, the SRO has purchased the Nurburgring 24 hours, <gasps> which is very interesting. Oh. Well, that is something to ponder on. That is. I don't know if I like that or not, to be honest. I'm not sure. That is... Mm. We might have to come back and debate that later. We're going to have to see if that is... Because the Network 24 is kind of its own thing. It is, and I don't I, want that to turn into a GT3 thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I want to still see the Opel Manta out right. there getting passed by that Mercedes. Right. Get, or getting <laughs> just obliterated by a Porsche. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Or, or, or something. So whatever happens to it. Because it is a, a moving roadblock. Yes. Yes. There's multiple of them at the Network 24. This race was put on basically flawlessly by the SRO, in my opinion. They did a really good job with safety cars and, yeah. and tr- managing everything. Um, but real quick, this was also the first time they did the wave around. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, I did they not implemented the ra- wave around as well. Oh, and so you can get your lap back? Yep. People were, but they only did it for the lower class cars. Oh. If you were in the pro really class, odd. you couldn't get your lap back. That's very odd. It was very odd. Hmm. Not sure I like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I do like giving the AMs more of a, a reason to stay in the fight, though. I do, too. But the pros shouldn't have that as well, in my opinion. Hmm. <laughs> odd. Very odd. Yeah, but what an amazing race. What yep. an amazing race that was. Yeah, super good. Uh, is that the last notable 24 of the year? Uh, let's see. Rolex is done. Yep. Lamar's done. Yep. Nevergreen's done. Right. Uh, Spa's done. Spa's done. Everything else is a 10 or a 12, isn't it? There's like a, I think the Creventic does another 24 or two. But Don't they do a notable. Dubai 24? Yeah, but it's also broken up into two days and it's like 12 and 14 or like, yeah. it's, it's different. It's not, I don't it's know not one of the big an, ones. I don't know if there's another proper 24. I don't think so. I think that the, the next notable Petit Le Mans, right, which is 10 hours. Um, what are some other big endurance? 
I think that those are um, there's not a ton left because we already had. So there's the WEC is racing six hour stuff. Yeah, like but the, Monza coming up. That's their normal stuff. Yeah, I think that this was the last big twenty four other than Creventic stuff that is going to happen this year. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm pretty sure. Take a quick Google here. So, uh, American Le Mans series doesn't exist. Nope. <laughs> Uh, the 24 Hours of Lemons. No. Yeah, baby. It's Let's notable. go. Right. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I believe that that's the last big one for a, for a while. Last 24. Yeah. Right. Right. So, there was some other racing that happened. There was actually a bunch more. Uh, yeah. But we need to talk about, mm, was this the best race of the weekend? I'm not sure. Well, well how would you describe the mm. best? <laughs> I don't know. Wait. We got to talk about the NASCAR race. Okay, let's okay. do it. NASCAR but, Streets of Chicago. Yes. To set the stage, we went into this assuming it was going to be an absolute disaster. And what was it? It was a successful disaster. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was the most. The way I described it is, it was like the most entertaining, perfectly choreographed chaos. Yeah. It was. It was good. I'll give it the thumbs up. Uh, but I have questions about it in the future. And we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. <laughs> okay. So this was NASCAR at the streets of Chicago. Um, to kick it off, I think that they only had three days of track time, which was a bit odd. It's not a lot. Nope. There was only the Xfinity Series there and the Cup Series there. Um, the Xfinity Series race happened on Saturday, and they only ran 26 of the 55 laps due to weather. Mm. Uh <clears throat> Chicago had a drought going into this weekend, and then they got a monsoon's worth of rain the whole weekend. So I heard. Yeah. it They had actual flooding and, like, big problems. Um, NASCAR picked... Perfect timing. ...the worst weekend to go to Chicago. Um, prior to the cup race, the Saturday prior, some shenanigans happened on track in the middle of the night where apparently some hooligans broke in and decided to race their own cars around the NASCAR road course track. Jesus Christ. Which is kind of awesome and also the most Chicago thing I've ever heard in my life. The, of course that happens in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course. Apparently someone was arrested, but... Uh, th- like yeah. a race to see who can get drive-by shot the least? I, I can only hope <laughs> that the cops had to race around the track to catch the guy. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Yes, please tell me that that was happening. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder how many laps that took. <laughs> I don't know for a fact. The details are a little iffy here and there, but that rumor has it there was racing that happened at night between the cops and some hooligans on the track. <laughs> 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 so it delivered. Chicago delivered, baby. Um, the race itself, the Cup Series race itself, going into this, we thought it was going to be an absolute disaster. It started in the rain, which... <laughs> Is not a, a typical NASCAR thing. No. I think it's only the second time, like if ever. I recall, that they've ever. ever used rain tires on these cars. Yeah. First time they've ever raced a street course like this, which I find hard to believe, but apparently that's the case. It seems odd, but I guess it's correct. I, I've i watched Indy and so many you know, like V8 supercars and all these things go to the street and race around in street circuits. And they're fine. Why has NASCAR never done this? I don't know. It's so weird, but apparently they hadn't. Um, and going into this, I thought there was going to be the big pile up into turn one. No, they all seemed to get through it. Um, it was messy. Everybody was slipping and sliding. Cars were touching barriers, but that's kind of what I expected. I, I expected even worse than that. Uh, there was only, to my understanding, one big track blocking pile up. I where thought like we'd get everyone just piles into it. Yeah, yeah. Where you couldn't even get through it. You just had to come to a complete stop. I thought we'd get four or five of those, to be honest. To, I, I kind of was thinking at least three, at minimum. No, they they held it together a lot better than I thought they would. That is surprising. Which I did was, hear some of the some of the drivers chirping that like the Europeans are going to think we all suck at driving now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you are taking the NASCAR guys out of their element. They're used to a mile and a half dry oval, Correct. which is way different than a wet concrete asphalt road course. That's bumpy. That you're taking a NASCAR, which is basically a boat without any grip. Correct. And you're driving around that course. With no braking, no grip, no no suspect. It's awful. Yeah. Our cars would go way further into the braking zone than these cars. Oh, yes. No, it, it's it, Those cars cannot stop. 
They just not, don't stop. <laughs> zero amount of no. stoppage. And there was a lot of not stopping in this race because all the cautions that did come out were people just having it way too deep into the brakes, locking up the rears, losing the rear, going upside down, backward, and putting it into it the It looked like an iRacing lobby. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it's like every it kind of corner, like someone it. locks it up and just stuffs it and takes out two or three cars. It kind of felt like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it did make for some entertaining racing. I oh, will for say sure. That. It was super entertaining to watch the guys really pedal these cars through the streets of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Uh, The crowd, relatively good. Uh, Unfortunately for the crowd that had the whole weekend pass, it was rainy, really messy. Uh, They canceled all the concerts that were happening on Saturday. Oh, no. Because of the rain. They only got half the laps that they wanted to see in the Xfinity race. And they also only had, I think that they lost 25 laps in the cup race. It was supposed to be a 100-lap race, and they only finished 75. (sighs) Oh. And they only finished 75 due to them starting. They wanted to start this race at like 4 or 5, which kind of seems silly to me. It does seem way too late initially. Yeah, especially if that's like the only event that's supposed to be happening on that day. Yeah, Um, start at noon. Right, and they had to cut it short because of daylight. NASCAR doesn't have headlights. They don't have track lights. (laughs) They had to cut it short due to daylight. So then the first thought of mine is, wait, we just saw a NASCAR race at night for 24 hours. What are we doing? Nah. What are we doing? That one had headlights. It did. Why don't we put headlights on these cars, and why can't we race at night? I agree. I, Without the giant floodlights that you see at Daytona or wherever they race at mm-hmm. night, right? In theory, you could do a street race. I know uh, F1 does the street races at night, but they light that place up like insanely lit. Yeah. I don't think you need that for NASCARs with headlights, but I, agree. I don't know. It was unfortunate to see him miss 25 laps. Um, yeah. But the big talking point of this race was that your boy Shane Van Gisbergen, which the announcers could not say his name to save their <laughs> life, came over from Australia doing his V8 supercar thing, got a ride with Trackhouse, which is the same team that uh, does the Ross Chastain stuff. And that Kimi Raikkonen. Yep, yep. And he won this race. The first time he has ever raced this race, he won. That is Amazing. He had never run a NASCAR, never raced in NASCAR, came over here, won the race. You know what? Props to you, SVG. I knew he was an extremely good driver. I've watched him in V8 Supercar. V8 Supercar is amazing, by the way. I was going to say, is he driving a V8 Supercar? Is that essentially just like an Australian NASCAR? It is. It's an Australian NASCAR with more aero. Different aero. Different aero. Right, they have the big wing on the back, which so they, the arrow comes from the top of the car, whereas in these NASCARs, it's all diffuser and under 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 tray. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he looked at home. Oh, he, he, looked, he so looked good, so comfortable in the car. He didn't look like there is any drama, no excitement. Every corner, every braking zone, every turn in looked so cool, calm, collected. Just okay. I'm gonna break here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn in right now. I will say the stars aligned. It was rainy start at a track that all the other guys had never raced at, at cars with cars and tires that they're not super familiar with. Yeah. But I will say he dominated that race. He didn't just race well. He was a bit of a Max Verstappen in that race. He didn't didn't do the full Max Verstappen go from pole to win, lead every lap. Well, yes, but his... His performance was just dominating. By the end of that race, he was by far the best car on track. And it was like by a mile. Yeah, like every corner he was pulling out like a quarter second. Right. That's that's a lot. It was very that's impressive to see. This is the first time in 60 years that somebody races in their first race and wins in the Cup Series. That is really exciting. 60 years. That's that really, crazy. really exciting. Yeah. Good for him. Good yeah. for SVG and Shane Van Gisbergen. Now, the next question I want to ask you is, how many teams called up Scott McLaughlin and a bunch of other old V8 supercar legends and said, hey, you interested in riding a NASCAR on some streets next year in Chicago? I think a lot of them do. I think a lot of them look to Aussie V8 supercar or Repco supercars, whatever it is now. Yeah. And they go, hey, what you got planned for like July next year. Yeah. I would be doing the same darn thing. Oh, for sure. And to my understanding, all the NASCAR guys are like, oh, 
we're not very good at this whole road course thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, huh, that didn't go well. No. Uh-oh. Yeah, we might need to get better at this. Yeah, so does that mean we're going to see more NASCAR drivers coming into IMSA to get seat time at road courses? I don't know. I don't know how NASCAR drivers, will they go over to the V8s? Will, will they, they go just... to MX-5 Cup? Please go. Because that it's, I would say MX-5 Cup, with the body contact, would be the most comparable to racing a NASCAR on a road course. Yeah, I, I think Just V8s, take like 600 horsepower off. Right, the V8 supercars would be the closest you could get. But, but on this side of the, of the world. I don't know, because they have H patterns in those MX-5s. And like, I, uh. Yeah, but have you seen how they drive the MX-5s? These they guys dr- would get smacked by the MX-5 they Cup drive, drivers. But the MX-5 drivers drive like NASCAR drivers. Yeah, I know. They're sliding the car the whole time. And they're, they're bumping on the limit. everyone. Yes, they bump draft at Daytona. I understand that. But these guys would just get spanked by them. <laughs> they wouldn't keep up with the pack. <laughs> so you're trying to tell me NASCAR drivers will get spanked by MX-5 Cup drivers? At MX-5 Cup? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> it's just way different driving style. Yeah. Yeah. It was neat. It was really cool to see. This This race actually delivered. But now the final question to ask you, should they do it again next year? You are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that question. <laughs> um, oh, Should they bring it back? Yes. I think as of now, yes. Because it's really exciting. Okay, if SVG doesn't win this race, is this the race that everyone talks about this weekend? Yeah, just because it's still just chaos. But I think that it's in a bad light then. Why? Because it's so chaos. And because the cars couldn't stay on track and it almost is dangerous and the conditions were bad and there was bad press at night. And like, I think him winning this race saved this race. You think so? Honestly, yes. Because what good came from this race other than him winning? You, you know, you very well may be right. I mean... The weather was crap. They didn't get all the laps in. It turned to night. They screwed up the schedule because they didn't start the race early enough. They had a good turnout of fans, but the fans were absolutely miserable to my knowledge. And I, there was like nothing else good other than an Aussie coming over and smacking all the NASCAR drivers around. Is he actually from New Zealand? Yeah, he's from New Zealand. Oh, so he's a Kiwi. Uh, yeah, he'd be a Kiwi. But he races V8 supercars in Australia. Yes, so you can fair. call him an Aussie. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're way, basically uh, the same thing. I, I don't. He may have saved the race. I think he did. And I think that they bring this race back only because he saved this race. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that they bring it back with more road course ringers than were there this year. That'd be great. And I bet you would get Ricky... Back, Jordan Taylor, or Jordan Taylor, yeah. or Ricky Taylor, back. Yeah, I I would imagine uh, some GT three guys would Andy come Lally in again, right? Because he was there already, right? right? I'd love to see them. Maybe Kimmy's back. Yep, possibly. Uh, if it's a rain race, all those guys have a good shot. I would like to see Mark Weber. That'd be neat. I'm down for that. He's an Aussie. He's an Aussie. Yep. I don't know what other uh, V8 supercar drivers. I, I can imagine Scott McLaughlin. If IndyCar is not running, he gets a call. Oh, for sure. That'd be amazing. He battled with uh, SVG throughout their career in V8 supercars. So, yeah, we'll see. Super cool, though. Yeah. What a wild race. Yeah. Yeah. Who took took second and third in that race? Uh, Second and third. So, first, Shane Van Gisbergen. We know that. Uh, Second, Justin Haley in a Chevy. Third place was Chase Elliott in a Chevy as well. Gotcha. Chevy swept the top five. Wow. That's impressive for them. Yeah. So, what a wild race. The yeah, very, race very was. crazy, I would say. Yes. Now, you want to talk about a race that was not as crazy? Uh, sure. Let's talk about a very boring race. Okay, let's quickly talk about Formula Boring, because there's not a ton to talk about. Correct. It was um, Formula Boring, for sure. It was, and this was the Max Verstappen sweep, to spoil it for you. Um, mm-hmm. He basically was the fastest in almost every practice. He was the fastest to qualify the initial qualifying. Then they did the sprint race. He won that. He had a little bit of battling with uh, Checo, his teammate, uh, in that race. And then he started on pole, and he led every lap. Did Verstappen take fastest lap? Yes. So, I don't know. Did I hear this correctly, or am I incorrect here? Did Verstappen pit at, like, lap 70 just to get softs? Yeah. 
Just to get fastest lap. Yeah, he was about 30 seconds ahead, which meant if he pit, put on softs, he would be within five seconds of second place. And he did. And, and then he, he got fast lap. And he got fast lap. <laughs> and he got fast lap by like a second and a half margin, too. And he doesn't even have DRS. No. <laughs> yeah, it was an absolute domination. Uh, when he called to get the, the fast lap tires, they were like, no, it's too risky. We could screw up the pit stop. And he's like, I don't care. I want the point. And he came in. So they put he just the kind tires. of shows everyone, I'm better than you, and I know it. Yep. <clears throat> Even Christian, he's like, no, I'm making the call. You don't get a choice. I'm coming in. Either you put tires on me, or you don't do anything, and we lose this race. He's like, okay, I'll put tires on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, he's an absolute monster right now. Uh, other quick notables. Uh, there was some interesting racecraft that happened with Max when he was uh, – Going down into, I think it's turn seven in that track. I don't remember the exact corner. Whenever he was passing Leclerc for the lead. Yes. Uh, he would wait and not pass going into that corner just to get the DRS coming out of that corner into the next straight. That's that's an impressive bit of racecraft and thought process there. It was. Most guys would just go, it's a gap. I'm taking it now. Right. Where he goes, well, wait a minute now. If I take this now, then that means when on corner exit, Leclerc is going to have DRS behind me. I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, and his teammate Perez had the option to do that at one point, And I think like did two or three laps before he finally figured out like, oh, I should probably do that to get around this Haas because <laughs> this is, yeah, this is how you're supposed to do this. So it was impressive by him. Uh, the McLarens did look solid, which was good for them. Uh, let's see. We had Lando Norris was a P4 in a McLaren. And then where's the other one? Uh, uh, way down. He had he had a problem at the beginning of the race. He's like right. dead yes, last true. or something. Yeah, not great. Yeah. Uh, but Lando looked really good. Apparently, they brought a new upgrade package on the car this this time. Good. And he had speed. Good. This is the first time that this, in my opinion, this McLaren has looked this fast and this competitive. I, I will say, I am pleased with the results of this race. Why is that? So we had Verstappen P1, Leclerc P2, a Ferrari in the top three. Mm-hmm. Happy to see that. Uh, Perez P3, Lando P4, Alonso, again, good points, P5, I wanted to see a podium, but good enough. Right. Uh, they had another Ferrari with good points. And then Russell finished above his teammate again. <laughs> Beats Lewis again. Mm-hmm. Just by one spot, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, man. Lewis was uh, complaining on the radio a lot for off tracks. He was bitching and moaning about everyone. There were a lot of off tracks happening at this race. Uh, I saw there it, were a lot of penalties. I saw an iRacing meme was being thrown around that had like the the green off track symbols, and it was just <laughs> the F one race today. <laughs> yes, and there was a million of them. Uh, yeah, there were a lot of penalties in this race. Other than that, it was kind of boring. Yeah, it was. It was kind of uh, I, I'm. I'm pretty much just relegating myself to watch the highlights of F one for the rest of the season. Yeah, because. No one, no other team is winning a race this year. I think Red Bull will win every single race. I'm pretty sure. Unless yeah. something catastrophic happens in a race, Red Bull will win every single race. Yep. Which is very unfortunate for F1. But it's not the first time we've seen this. This is a common occurrence in F1. It happens every couple of years. Yep. Every few years, it's a Mercedes, it's a Ferrari, it's a someone. You got to weather the storm. Eventually, F1 will be entertaining again. Yes, but that moves on to the other bit of open wheel racing that is very entertaining at the moment. Oh, yes. That would be IndyCar at Mid-Ohio this past weekend. And oh, yes. And that was legit. There was some uh, real craziness that happened at Mid-Ohio. Uh, and I'm going to play you one little clip that is uh, in a practice. Simon Pagano had about the craziest off I have ever seen, to be honest. Let's see it. Check this out. Oh, my God. Okay. So Simon Pagano lost it into, I think it's turn five at Mid-Ohio. Um, and that car did six or seven tumbles before it came to a stop. He walked away. Actually, no problem. Because the car didn't come to a stop quickly. It kind of tumbled, 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 tumbled. And he was fine. That was a scary looking crash. That is a very scary looking crash. That looks big. Yep. I mean, 
That was a hell of a crash. He did not participate in the rest of the race, which was reasonable. Um, Can't really blame him there. No, and I believe it was um, Connor Daly came and took his place because mm. Connor Daly no longer has a ride in IndyCar. Ah. Mm-hmm. He was there as a spectator, but you bring your helmet and gloves and goodies when you go as a spectator and you have a license because you never know what's going to happen. You may have some Bajano taking a, a six-flip ride into the wall. Yeah. He was not unharmed. He was a little harmed, but he wasn't. It wasn't badly injured. There wasn't back. any serious injuries, which no. is amazing. Yeah, he walked that. away, but after some further investigation, they were like, you should probably take the rest of the weekend off. Yeah, why don't you just hang out for a bit? Yeah. So mm. this race in general, that was in practice. Uh, this race in general, I didn't get to catch a lot of it. Did you catch most of it? I only watched the highlights because okay. I was just busy and didn't get a chance to watch it. I was watching more spa, and then uh, I just had stuff to do. Right. Um, but this was very exciting to watch. Um, battles everywhere again. I'm to the point now where if an Indy race and an F1 race, F1 race are on at the same time, I'm not going to watch the F1 race. No, I'm going to watch the Indy race because the Indy race is just so much more exciting. Yeah, there are some really good battles in Indy. I mean, like ridiculously good battles. Mm-hmm. There was some dude that looped it going into pit lane. It was just at every this race was so exciting. The same thing that we've said the past week as well. Where, where was Indy last week? Uh, Road America. Road America. That was brilliant as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The battles at Road America, the battles at Mid-Ohio. Oh, we had people oh, flipping each other so off, good. giving each other the bird and practice. It, it, Indy delivers, dude. Here's my question. Have we had a single race this year in Indy where a car hasn't gone airborne, whether it's in practice or in the race? Ooh. Um... Started off with a banger at St. Pete. St. Pete, cars were airborne. There was two of them. Two or three cars airborne, yep. Um, Indy 500 definitely had a car airborne. It had tires in the stands, yep. Um, this race definitely had cars flipping around. Uh, did Road America have I a car? I think there may have been one little... Yeah, because Grosjean took a bit of a, a catching air coming out of whatever that sharp left is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like every road, almost every <laughs> indie race, someone goes airborne even slightly. Yeah, I don't know if like like um, the the oval stuff that they do gets yeah. airborne. You don't want to see that. That's just bad news when yeah. that happens. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think most of the the good battle races. Did Detroit have someone? Maybe I think so. Uh, it might have. I'm not I sure. I think there was a wheel to wheel contact. Yeah, there might have been because that'll get you going. <laughs> I feel like every road course there's someone going airborne in it. IndyCar delivers, man. IndyCar it is, is awesome. Some really exciting racing. Yeah. But man, what a race! Who took down the win? Alex Palo took mm. the win again. He's on a good streak right now. That's three in a row. Is it three in a row? For That's him? three in a row for Alex Palo. So does what does that mean for the future of Alex Palo? That's the real question, isn't it? Will Alex Pillow continue to drive in IndyCar next year? Because word on the street is he's going to get some sort of contract, at least negotiation with some sort of F1 team. Which one? We don't know. Will he go? Seems like That's he'll kind want to. Of what I thought was going to happen last year. Yeah, that was the whole shenanigan that was going on with almost the lawsuit and all this other BS. Um, uh, we'll see. Silly season is going to be very interesting if you're an Alex Pillow fan. Yes, it will. Because it sounds to me like he's going to ditch his IndyCar ride, which he's kind of dominating at this point, and move over to F1, or at least try to. We'll see. Yeah. But real quick, it was uh, P1, Alex Pillow, P2, Scott Dixon, P3, Will Power. Okay. Oh, an S2000. Let's go, the, baby. Uh, the pre-race ceremonies. That's, That's cool. Funny. Yeah. That's cool. Another S2000. Yeah, maybe it's the Honda sponsorship stuff. Yeah, it would obviously be. Yep. <laughs> That's cool, though. That is cool. So that was basically most of the racing that happened this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, upcoming this next weekend. There's a lot of racing as well. A lot of racing. Yeah. Let's see. Starting IMSA, we got IMSA at what you and I probably remember as Sport, but what is also now known as Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Uh, that is going to be a good race. Oh, it is. Uh, F1 is racing again at Silverstone, or if you are from the UK, Silverstone. The British Grand Prix. Yep, the British Grand Prix. Then you have the WEC, the WEC, World Endurance Championship. They're racing at Monza. That'll be exciting to see, too. 
First time we've seen Monza this year because F1 kind of skipped it and had all And this there's going to be an extra Porsche 963. WeatherTech is entered into Hypercar with a That's 963. Right. And I believe WeatherTech's also entering IMSA with a Porsche 963 as well. Wow. So well, there's an extra Hypercar in there. Porsche better start winning these races. They He's not cars. looking good right now. <laughs> uh, NASCAR <laughs> is racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway, but then there's also a really exciting NASCAR race that's not a Cup Series race that's going on this weekend. Where's that? NASCAR trucks are racing at Mid-Ohio. Oh, God. Oh, my God. The calamity. <laughs> It's going to be the most ridiculous thing we've ever seen. This is not the first time they've done this. They definitely did it last year. I don't know about the year prior to that. Uh, but yeah, Truck Series at Mid-Ohio is exactly what you would expect. <laughs> it's so rowdy. Yes. <laughs> I cannot wait to how, watch to see how ridiculous this is going to go. Pretty awesome. It's going to be ridiculous. Yeah. So that's all I've got for episode 237. You got anything else? No. It's going to wrap us up then. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up on the video and drop a comment on this video. Let us know. What do you think about the whole NASCAR Chicago? Will it be sticking around or has it met its final day? If you're listening on audio only, send us those thoughts via social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is We Are Auto.io. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.